When it comes to controlling and censoring information online, algorithms are often the first method of deployment that most companies use. But what do you do when the algorithms themselves are red-pilled? Hello everyone, this is Mr. Obvious bringing you the obvious and today on vox.com recode vox says where did our ads go vox relies on advertising to make the news videos you love consider whitelisting us in your ad blocker well vox your ads went to the same place mine did to the shadow realm vox is the one who demonetized steven crowder and companies like vox are the ones that encouraged youtube to demonetize people like me yeah how do you like a taste of your own medicine? The algorithms that detect hate speech online are biased against black people. <laughs> a new study shows that leading AI models are 1.5 times more likely to flag tweets written by African Americans as offensive compared to other tweets. Yeah, never mind the fact that maybe they're actually doing it correctly and that their tweets are just generally more offensive. Um. This is a funny paradox when it comes to the left, when it comes to progressivism. It's the paradox of truth. And the paradox of truth really isn't such a paradox. It is not paradoxical to assume that a logical-based code, a logical algorithm, will correctly identify the world as it appears, without bias, without emotion, and without progressivism. The truth paradox is simple. What do you do when the algorithms prove you wrong, and prove that your ideology is incorrect. But before we jump into this story, as some of you may know, monetization on my channel has been completely disabled. I have been called a wrong thinker, and I've been cast out. That is why this content is 100% viewer supported. You can join me on Patreon or Subscribestar for as low as $1. There are different tiers, you can pick whatever you want. Doing so will get you access to Fight Club, the private Discord server. I'm aiming for a thousand patrons. The number grows every day. And I want to thank everyone who joins. This article is by Sharon Gaffare and has a picture of two tweeting birds. So new studies show that AI trained to identify hateful speech online may actually end up amplifying racial bias. Platforms like Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter are banking on developing artificial intelligence technology to help stop the spread of hateful speech on their networks. The idea is that complex algorithms that use natural language processing will flag <laughs> racist or violent speech faster and better than human beings possibly can. Doing this effectively is more urgent than ever in light of recent mass events and violence linked to hate speech online. So leave it to the communists and the cultural Marxists to call for censorship to solve society's problems. The fact is, people are being censored, people are being silenced, people are being discriminated against, and I'm not talking about just minority groups. Okay, there's a lot of discrimination against white people these days, against Asians. Everyone is suffering. The solution is not to take away people's voices. The solution is, who would have thunk it? Equal treatment. The problem with algorithms is that they often do not work and strike everyone down. Punish everybody, because if one person doesn't have free speech, no one does. But two new studies show that AI trained to identify hate speech may actually end up amplifying racial bias. Literally how? You've yet to explain how. In one study, researchers found that leading AI models for processing hate speech were one and a half more times likely to flag tweets as offensive or hateful when they were written by African Americans and 2.2 times more likely to flag tweets written in African American English. <laughs> There's no such thing, buddy. It's either English or incorrect. Uh, which is commonly spoken by black people in the U.S. I, I think what, the, what they're talking about, um, it goes by the popular phrase Ebonics, but it's how African Americans speak, which is generally incorrectly. Um, uh, incorrect grammar, incorrect usage of words, incorrect pronunciation. It's just incorrect English. Like, grammatically, it's a mess. There's no... So <laughs> it's not a language. Uh, the... The closest thing, it's a dialect. That's exactly what it is. It is a dialect spoken by the African-American community. And it just so happens that the dialect is not, well, it's not proper English. Another study found similar widespread evidence of racial bias against black speech in five widely used academic data sets for studying hate speech and totaled around 155,800 Twitter posts. This is in large part because... What is considered offensive depends on social context. Terms that are slurs when used in some settings, like the N-word or the Q-word, may not be in others. 
But algorithms and content moderators who grade their test data that teaches these algorithms how to do their job don't usually know the context of the comments they're reviewing. Yeah, so that's been a big problem with algorithms for years, and it's never gonna go away. Algorithms do not understand context. And this is bullshit logic, okay? If a word's offensive, that means it's always offensive. It's either offensive or it's not offensive. You gotta make up your mind. You can't say it's okay for some people to say the N-word, but not okay for other people. That's not equal treatment. That's not equity. That's not equality. It's bullshit. Anecdotally, activists have for some time accused platforms like Facebook of policing the speech of black Americans more strictly than that of white Americans. In one notable case reported by Reveal, a black woman was banned from Facebook for posting the same Dear White People note that many of her white friends posted without suffering any consequences. Well, if you ask me, all of them should have been flagged for offensive content. If that's going to be the rule, you need to apply it equally. It doesn't matter if you're black, it doesn't matter if you're white. If you're being bigoted against people and the policy is, we're not gonna let that be shown, which is bullshit because that violates free speech, at least treat everyone the same. You know, maybe her, her post was offensive. You ever think about that? So Martin Sapp, a PhD and student in computer science and engineering, and his colleagues at the University of Washington set out to study what's flagged as offensive on Twitter because of the important political conversations that happen on the platform. They first gathered more than 100,000 tweets used in two widely cited academic data sets. These tweets had been hand flagged by human beings with labels such as being being hate speech offensive or abusive. The results were astounding. Tweets written by self-identified African-American users were on average found to be 1.5 times more likely to be flagged as offensive. Maybe they actually were more offensive. Researchers then applied this test data into a larger algorithmic model run using natural language processing on 56 million tweets and saw that these biases were only further reinforced. You know, this is the problem with leftism. Even when reality is staring them right in the face, they can't admit it. Maybe, just maybe, your algorithm is working correctly and African Americans are saying more offensive stuff. It's no secret that African American communities are more vocal about their opinions. Online obviously would be included. So, and then this is where they get racist, honestly, because this is just further proof that the left and liberals are racist and they look down on minority groups. Taking the research a step further, Sapp and his colleagues decided to do something interesting. They primed workers labeling the same data to think about users' dialect and race when deciding whether a tweet was offensive or not. Ah, the results showed that when moderators knew more about the person tweeting, they were significantly less likely to label that tweet as potentially offensive, which reduced um, racial bias against tweets with black speech by 11%. So that's absolutely nonsense. And it's proof that the left is racist. It really is. Because if they were being objective before and deciding what was offensive, nothing to do with race, which is the correct, the correct way to do it, they did it fairly, but when told to think about their skin tone, which is automatically discriminate based on skin tone, decide if it's offensive. In other words, they're making people afraid to say that an offensive statement by a minority is actually offensive. Maybe it is offensive. How delusional are you? So this problem keeps coming up. No matter how many algorithms they make, they always find African-American speech more toxic. Maybe there's a reason for that, and maybe it has nothing to do with bias. You see, that's the way the left views reality. If something flies in the face of reason, well, the algorithm must be wrong. Reality must be wrong. I know what is true. My truth is the truth. They have no objective reason. They have no sense of reality. It's the paradox of truth, my friends. How do you reconcile reality with your personal ideology? It's cognitive dissonance. Nevertheless, these studies crack open the fantasy that AI will be able to rescue tech companies from making the complex decisions needed to police hateful speech on their platforms. These algorithms may seem like an easy solution to a complex problem, but they can have unintended consequences. <laughs> You mean unintended consequences like punishing people who have done nothing wrong? Yeah, um, we're way past that point. Algorithms have the unintended consequence of punishing literally everybody. Needless to say, the algorithms are red-pilled. The red pill means the truth. You can take it straight from the matrix. It's the truth and nothing more. And if algorithms are telling you that a certain group of people have more offensive speech, maybe the algorithm's right and you're wrong. But that's merely the obvious. Well, that's all for now, folks. What do you think about algorithms? Do you think they're red-pilled? Be sure to let me know.
Now, as always, you can join me on Patreon or Subscribestar for as low as $1. There's also PayPal and Bitcoin options. The next best thing you can do for the channel is to share videos you enjoy or think are important on social media. We're being censored online. We're being suppressed. They're trying to hide our content. So sharing videos always helps. And now it's time for a Q&A session with Mr. Obvious. I decided to start with the most important question. Here you can see, Teko says, top five waifus. This was an extremely difficult question, but I set out to do my best to scientifically answer who the top five best waifus of all time really are. My top five waifus would probably be the following. One, crossbreed Priscilla from the Dark Souls series. Priscilla is a half dragon, half human hybrid who lives in the painted world. She was persecuted by the gods for being too cute. She's very tall and has a fluffy tail. I think you can see that I'm a man of substance. Ah, oh, the second top waifu of my choice would have to be Megumin from Konosuba. Explosions and wizardry. What's not to love? Keep in mind these are my top five. They aren't in any specific order. The third choice would be Shinobu. This is from the Monogatari series. Shinobu is an immortal vampire. Number four would be Bowsette. There's just something about shark teeth that is really appealing. And number five would have to be Astoflo from the Fate Stay series. Ah, uh, yes. It just makes it better. As always, thanks for watching. This has been Mr. Obvious, and I'll see you all next time.